Ego defenses are free points. Just like in Braveheart, instead of freedom, they are free points. So let me break this down for you. On test day, you're gonna get things that you just simply don't know the answers to. You're gonna get those questions wrong. They're gonna be things like ethics and complicated topics and brand new drugs that are literally so new that you just had no time to familiarize yourself with them. Those are okay questions to lose points on. Ego defenses are not. If you take a little bit of time and you learn what these things are and you think about what the actual ego defense name means in the English dictionary, you will get the point. So let's go through these. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know and nothing more as it relates to ego defenses. So let's get right into it. Ego defenses can be broken down into either immature defenses or mature defenses. There's a very, very long list of immature defenses, which you see here. And there's a very, very short list of mature defenses that you see here. Now, let me just say this. The dichotomy between immature defenses and mature defenses really doesn't matter for the purpose of USMLE and Comlex. This may matter in your psychiatry exam if you're still a medical student, but otherwise, you really don't need to know the difference. But I think that it helps mentally separate these and helps us provide a structure for explaining ego defenses in this video. So because mature defenses have a much shorter list, we're going to start with them. So let's talk about the mature defenses first. So we have altruism, suppression, sublimation, and humor. Now, guys, one of the themes that I'm going to point out before we get started is that if you take a minute to really think about what the name of the ego defense is and what that word means in the English dictionary, most of these are very self-explanatory. So if you're taking a question and you have a question on ego defenses and you're really not sure what the answer is, think about what the word means and try to see if your description in your head of that word matches whatever is given to you in the clinical vignette. So let's get right into this. So altruism is when you give to charity to relieve guilt. And the picture here is of the movie American Gangster. And if you remember the very beginning of that movie, one of the mobsters is standing at a truck and he's giving out turkeys on Thanksgiving to all of the members of the community. So being altruistic means to be very charitable or to be very generous. And this ego defense involves giving things away to other people and engaging in charity to make yourself feel better. So again, in this movie, he's a mobster, but he's giving things to the community to make himself feel better. That's the classic example of altruism. Mm -hmm. Suppression is the intentional omission of an idea from your consciousness. So this is a picture from the show Fear Factor. And when people go into these like little tubs and they've got snakes or spiders all over them, they intentionally suppress the thought of what's happening from their head and they try to make it through the challenge. That's suppression. Suppression, um, I'll differentiate later on from some other things that sort of sound like it and can be confusing for you on test day, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. So for now, suppression is the intentional or voluntary withholding of an idea from your consciousness. Sublimation is substituting an acceptable object for your emotion. So if you remember in the movie, The Water Boy, um, Coach tells uh, Adam Sandler's character, visualize an attack. And Adam Sandler, instead of getting angry at people for bullying him all his life, he takes it out on other people in football. So when you substitute some type of activity, whether it's tackling people in football or punching a punching bag or chopping a tree with a sword, whatever it is, taking out your emotion on, on another object in, is a more acceptable way of dealing with negative emotions. That's sublimation. So here's our first three that we talked about. And the last one is very obvious. It's humor. So it's joking to make yourself feel better. So it's like you take USMLE, you walk out of the test center and you call your friends and you're like, I hope Burger King is hiring. That's humor. You're obviously making a joke to make yourself feel better because um, you're unsure if you just passed USMLE or not. But those are the four mature defenses. So let's switch gears now and talk about the immature defenses, which is obviously, as you see here, a much longer list. So immature defenses, we're going to start with these and we'll have more slides in the future. So acting out is using actions to express your feelings. This is classic of children when they have temper tantrums. So they act out. If you've ever heard the expression that you're acting out, that's this is exactly where that comes from. So this is a maladaptive ego defense that makes you feel better by having some type of tantrum and using actions to express your negative emotions. Dissociation is detaching oneself from reality. So I have a picture from the movie Split. Um, I hesitated a little bit to use this picture because this is more of a, a dissociative identity disorder type picture, but when you detach yourself from reality, it can make you feel better about some type of trauma or negative emotion that you've endured in the past, and that's what dissociation is. So anytime you detach yourself from reality and aren't really aware of what's going on, that's dissociation. 
Denial is refusing to believe reality. And I want to really differentiate this versus suppression, which we already talked about. So in denial, you refuse to believe reality, but you're still aware of whatever the thought that you're refusing to believe is. So for example, if a patient gets diagnosed with new, newly diagnosed cancer and they, they, they tell their oncologist, you know, I can't believe this, and they turn and walk out of the office and refuse to acknowledge that they actually have cancer, that's denial. And I want to differentiate that very closely from suppression, and where suppression is the voluntary withholding of the idea. So someone who's suppressing an idea tells you that, you know, I, I'm just not going to think about it. Someone who's in denial refuses to believe that it's real. So refusing to believe that it's real, that's denial. Voluntarily just taking it out of your brain and not even thinking about it, and neither refusing to believe it's real or accepting it as reality that is suppression. So be able to differentiate those two because they can be a little confusing on test day. Displacement is taking out your emotions on a neutral third party. And in Game of Thrones, Tywin Lannister holds so much contempt to a neutral third party, which is his son Tyrion, over the death of his wife. So um, Tywin's, if you're, if you're not a Game of Thrones fan, basically what happened was Tywin, the old guy in this picture, uh, as his wife was giving birth to Tyrion, who's on the right side of this picture, his wife died uh, during delivery. And all of Tyrion's life, he's been just enduring the brunt of his father's negative emotions on him, but he's really a neutral third party. So that's an example of displacement. Another example would be like if you get yelled at by an attending and you're a resident, and then you turn to the medical student and you yell at the medical student. So don't do that. You're an asshole if you do that, but that's displacement. Fixation is not advancing past a certain developmental stage. So you literally get stay fixed in time at an early developmental stage. And I'll, I'll compare and contrast that to something else later on in this video, which also kind of sounds like fixation. And then of course, fantasy is creating an imaginary view of something. I think that one's pretty obvious just based on the word. If you're fantasizing about something and creating something that's not real in your brain, that's fantasy. So let's uh, switch the slide here and talk about some more ego defenses. So we have identification. Identification is when you imitate behavior of a more powerful person. So an example of identification would be a child gets abused and then they grow up and they become the abuser. So they're imitating the behavior of somebody who was more powerful than them. And normally it's due to negative emotions. So that's identification. Isolation of affect is removing emotion from the event. So this would be an example. This would be like somebody is describing being attacked, but they do so without any emotion. So they're just totally flat affect, um, talking in a neutral tone about something that happened, which would cause the normal person to show a lot of emotion with that. So it's separating emotion from the content of what they're doing or what they're thinking. Everybody knows what passive aggression is. So if you're passive aggressive, you basically express feelings that are negative, but you do it in a non-confrontational way. Um, everybody knows what passive aggressive is being passive aggressive. So I'm not really going to do any examples there. Projection is when you attribute your own thoughts to an external source that doesn't have those thoughts. So the classic example of this is that you accuse your wife of cheating on you and she's never in fact cheated on you, but rather you've had thoughts that you've wanted to cheat on her. So it's like, you're thinking about ending your relationship. So you're thinking to yourself, you know, I bet, I bet my significant other is texting another guy or texting another girl. And you basically are projecting your thoughts to somebody else who doesn't have those thoughts because you want it to be true because you're having those thoughts. That's projection. Rationalization is avoiding hard truths by making logical statements. So this is like somebody who takes USMLE and gets a bad score and they say, it doesn't really matter what I get because I want to do family medicine anyway. So I'm going to match no matter what I get. That's rationalization. It's avoiding a hard truth or trying to make yourself feel better by being logical. That's rationalization. Reaction formation is acting in a way opposite of your true feelings. So a, a nice example of this would be somebody who's secretly gay, openly condemning homosexuality. That's a classic example of reaction formation. So the way that you act is actually opposite of your true feelings. Um, this Another classic example of this would be like the third grader that is really, really mean to the girl that he has a crush on because he actually really likes her. So that's reaction formation. Regression is reversion to an earlier developmental stage. An example of this would be like a teenager gets diagnosed with cancer and they start sucking their thumb or they start wetting their bed. So they've had some negative emotional blow dealt to them and then they regress and go back in time. Now I want to compare and contrast this versus fixation, which I already talked about. So in fixation, you stay fixed or you stay stuck at that developmental stage. So you develop, you develop, you develop, and all of a sudden you get stuck at a certain stage. 
regression, you go past that stage. You never get stuck at it. But then something happens to you and then you go backwards and you kind of like come back to an earlier developmental stage. So that's the difference. In regression, you come back in time and fixation, you never get past it. Repression is the involuntary withholding of negative thoughts. So this one's kind of kind of tricky, and I'm going to compare and contrast this versus both denial and suppression. So in repression, repression, you are withholding negative thoughts, but you're doing it involuntarily. So it's you're not like choosing to not think about something. You literally can't help yourself. It's just not in your brain. In denial, you refuse to believe something. They tell you you have cancer, and you go, no, I don't have cancer. I refuse to believe that. And you walk out of the doctor's office. In suppression, you voluntarily withhold ideas from your brain. So you say to people, you know what, I'm just not even going to think about it, whatever. In repression, the thought's literally not there. You're not controlling it. It's not in your brain, but you're not in control. In suppression, it's not in your brain, but you're in control. And in denial, it's you're just refusing to believe in it. So those are the three terms that really throw people off on test day. Make sure you understand the difference between those three. And then we're going to wrap up with splitting. Splitting is viewing things as binarily good or bad. So this is very classic of people with borderline personality disorder. Splitting isn't just like, like for some reason, medical students think that splitting literally means things are either good or bad. And that's not what splitting means. I mean, that, that is an example of splitting, but someone who splits could like be super nice to some, to like the front office staff of a doctor's office. So they're really, really nice to the secretary. And then they come back and they act like a total bitch to the physician or the attending. Splitting doesn't necessarily mean your view of something. It's how you act as well. So things can either be really, really good or really, really bad. Or people can either be amazing people that help you and that you really love and you talk to, or they can be like really awful people that you want nothing to do with and you just don't have a good relationship with them. So that's splitting. Things are either good or bad. On your test day on, on USMLE or Comlex, splitting will, will be like presented in the way that the classic definition is. So it'll be somebody who... Um, it's like really, really mean to, to front office staff and they're, they're calling and they're yelling at the secretary about getting their appointment. And then they come in and they talk to the physician and they're like, oh, thank you so much. Like you've made me so much better. So it's, it's a really drastic binary difference between how they are in one situation and how they are in another. And that's splitting. But guys, that's it. That's all of the ego defenses. I know I went through that rather quickly. I hope that the examples were useful to you. And remember, these should be free points. Don't lose, don't get a question wrong because you didn't take the time to think about what these words mean and to learn the ego defenses. I wish you the best of luck.